As an elected representative of a Scottish constituent, I am always acutely aware of how much last year's independence referendum shaped the politics of Scotland. The people of Scotland were asked to determine what kind of relationship they would like with the UK government and whether or not they were satisfied with the status quo. The electorate was given three years to debate the issue and as a result, Scotland is undoubtedly the most democratically engaged part of the United Kingdom. The 45% of people that voted yes had a clear view that Scotland should be independent and share friendly neighbourly relations with the people of England, Wales and in Northern Ireland. Those who voted no were content for the UK government to have some reserved power over Scotland. Regardless of which side was able to muster the majority of support on this occasion, the electorate unambiguously rejected the status quo and wanted to see a new relationship develop between Scotland and the rest of the United Kingdom. A relationship of equals. During the referendum campaign, the Prime Minister could not speak more highly of Britain's family of nations and that Scotland's voice would always be valued and respected. Yet as we move towards the UK's in-out referendum on EU membership, it becomes increasingly apparent that the Prime Minister's respect agenda means little in reality and once again Scotland finds itself sidelined and taken for granted. It is, however, not too late for the UK government to introduce measures to ensure that Scotland's voice in this debate is respected. One such measure would be to secure a referendum date that does not clash with the Scottish parliamentary elections. A referendum in June remains a distinct possibility, and I am not alone in believing that such a rushed campaign would leave inadequate time for debate and create a debilitating clash of purda periods. This overlap in purda would cause serious complications for broadcasters and practical difficulties for campaigners. For example, an SNP minister is invited to the BBC, those bastions of impartiality, to participate in an election debate. They're asked a question about the Scottish Government's fisheries policy, which, as most people know, will always be heavily influenced by decisions taken at a European level. The spokesperson then risks being cut off if they mention the EU, even though it is paramount to the content of the discussion. The state of our nations are such that Scotland's, the UK and the EU's legislation and powers intertwine. In many areas it is impossible to discuss one without mentioning the other, and yet that is what a period of purda insists we do. Therefore to overlap election periods means restricting the political dialogue and nobody would want that. As a member of the Public Administration and Constitutional Affairs Select Committee, I have taken a range of evidence on the referendum process, but I have yet to hear how the UK government expects political parties to work under the restrictive context that this purda problem would create. Such a situation makes it more difficult to disseminate information to the electorate, and ultimately that is to the detriment of our democracy as a whole. It is not acceptable for the UK government to simply dismiss these concerns as grievances for the sake of grievances on behalf of the Scottish National Party. These concerns have also been raised by parliamentarians from every major political party in Westminster and elsewhere in the UK by the First Minister of Scotland, Wales and Northern Ireland. I also recently met with, with Jenny Watson, Chair of the Electoral Commission and Chief Counting Officer for the EU referendum. Her expert opinion is welcome in this debate and in relation to the clash of Perth periods, she said, and I quote, I warned that there would be an impact from all of these matters on voter understanding of the substantive issues in the campaign and awareness of what people need to do to register and to vote, unquote. On reflection of these views, the UK government must give serious consideration to holding the referendum later in the year not only to avoid the problems that come with a clash of purda periods, but also to ensure that a reasonable amount of time is allocated for the debate. The electorate deserves more than six weeks to, to campaign to decide a major constitutional issue. I am aware that David Cameron has previously dismissed these concerns, but all I am asking him is this. If he is unwilling to listen to the concerns of the Scottish National Party, the First Ministers of Scotland, Wales and Northern Ireland, the Electoral Commission, or even his own Tory backbenchers, then can he at least listen to himself? 
on the 29th of January, the Prime Minister said, I am prepared to be patient. We don't need to have a referendum until the end of 2017. A referendum later in the year or in 2017 is a logical compromise and would encourage greater engagement in the political process, something that we should all welcome. If the UK government fails this basic act of courtesy towards Scotland and presses ahead with an EU referendum in June, then it will show just how little the Prime Minister has lent since the independence referendum. <laughs>